in a couple of weeks time we mark Acts 2 in the birth of the church at Pentecost when the Spirit is given and the gift from the Father that Jesus had asked the disciples to wait for is given and I'm opening towards that now thinking of the Spirit coming amongst these first disciples the image that Luke uses is that of flames like tongues of fire moving across the disciples in that upper room before they fall out into the street and start speaking I like to feel the moment in these events of Acts, the buildings and the streets the, the heat of the day, the buzz of the people and the crowds all there for the feast at Pentecost there they'll remember the words of God given to Moses on Mount Sinai after the exodus from slavery and he brings it down to the, to the people and suddenly there's this new freedom falling out from the inside rooms to the streets and there are voices all around and all these people from all over the Mediterranean and, and elsewhere and they're all hearing the, the words of God in their own language and it is a moment of noise, of excitement, of confusion, of joy, of lives being changed in some way and, and all in the sunshine. I mention that as one who stays in Glasgow. And uh, I'm making some first responses here. I know many like to debate if such a gift of tongues is a necessary part of faith and a gift of the Spirit. Such a gift comes in Acts 2 here at Pentecost. And again in Acts 10, where the gift is given to Cornelius and his friends, where Peter speaks with them after they come to, to faith. Then a new group of followers of Jesus in Ephesus in Acts 19. All of these are taking place with something of this gift of tongues, the languages. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> All these are taking place with the tongues and the the, uh, the languages and in these moments of coming to faith. But I also think of, of the Ethiopian in, in Acts 8, brought to faith by Philip in the Syrian desert. I think of Paul himself on the Damascus road and his blindness for three days. And I think of Lydia as well, also um, first Greece to, to follow Jesus after Paul comes over and without any expression tongues, all these things, the patterns of beliefs by which we come to Jesus and follow are many. This moment in Acts 2 is not a fixed pattern but a new expression of the Spirit. And what I'm looking at in these messages around Pentecost are the words that are spoken after resurrection. And here the words go like this. The Spirit gives the disciples the words to say that prompts those in the streets to respond with words like how can this happen? And what does this mean? Peter will answer all that, but that's for another time. Here it is this pattern of the Spirit moving across these disciples in their upper room. The picture has been like tongues of flames. And the words spoken by them as they come out onto the streets amongst the crowds. And their words are interrupting lives, prompting questions, how, why, what is this? We have come through so much interruption over this last year. The pattern of words in Acts 2, I think, is asking me today, am I ready for the spirit to interrupt my day? After all that the last year has been Am I ready for it to bring change and more? Am I ready to be someone who interrupts the lives of others? Am I ready to receive this gifting of the Spirit towards interrupting other people's lives? In Acts 10 and Acts 19, these other two events when the Spirit is spoken of in similar ways as tongues, it is to affirm those to whom the Spirit has come, to Cornelius, to the baptised followers in Ephesus. But here, here it is about disruption, interruption. The Spirit, as in Genesis, is moving over the waters of life, 
bringing new creation that is fresh, exhilarating and life changing. And it comes with the disruption of these words given in the spirit to the disciples that bring the questions of others in the street. But one thing I love in this expression of the Spirit's work here in Acts 2 is that the interruption of the Spirit comes to those in the streets in a language they understand. Our interrupting, disruptive words of the Spirit are not meant to come from nowhere, but to open up the questions which can be heard now. It is to be spoken in ways that mean something to those who hear, even though it interrupts. I think I'm calling them questions of the moment. The Spirit intends to prompt the questions that need to be asked now, preparing us to hear of Jesus for now. And so I reflect on this. Am I ready for the Spirit to ask the questions of this moment to me and through me? As we start to come back to things after such a year of interruptions and change, are we ready for this new work of the Spirit?